Um, that brings us on to our annual review. Um, I touched earlier on continued change. Um, change has been slightly closer to home for us at Pavo as well during this period, um, with our former chief executive, Carl Cooper, uh, leaving the organization after 14 years in post. Um, he's gone on to become the chair of Paris Teaching Health Board. And I thank him on behalf of the organization yet again for his service um, and wish him well in his new post. Um, I pass on now to Claire Swells, our interim chief exec, who I'm very pleased to have appointed and to be working with um, at the moment. And Claire's going to present our annual review. Lovely. Thank you very much, Jamie. It's lovely to be here this morning. Uh, it's been some six and a half years since I joined PAVO, and I'm delighted to have been appointed interim chief executive officer. Um, it's wonderful to work with the Board of Trustees and with colleagues across the whole organisation as we look to take the organisation forward. But first, it's my role to review uh, the year and I will just try and share my screen with you and share with you uh, a first look at our annual report, which will then be available on the website. So this is where I got to get the technology to work right, so bear with me. Okay, hopefully you can see that, albeit that it's in the PDF format. Can you see it okay? Yep, great. Lovely. Okay, so the annual report for 2021-22. I'm going to attempt to play this video, but this sometimes doesn't always work, so we shall see now. Let's... Uh... No. I don't think it will play on there. So what we'll do is make sure everybody has a copy of this afterwards and the link to the YouTube video. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen this video already. Uh, it was produced in house and gives you a flavor around uh, what PAVO is and what it does. So PAVO services, as you can see from this screen, PAVO offers a wealth of services. Um, we've heard Angela mention earlier today about the projects, but it's much wider than that from supporting community buildings, uh, funding support, which is absolutely vital, particularly in this time of cost of living crisis. We also have the conference and meeting room hire, and it's been wonderful to see that opportunity open back up as people move to face-to-face -to -face, uh, opportunities. As mentioned, we have the health and wellbeing information and engagement service and mental health information and participation service as well. They play a key role in liaising with statutory organisations and third sector groups, as well as ensuring we look towards co-production and having citizens' voices heard. It is absolutely vital that PAVO continues to deliver strong governance support for the third sector and supporting trustees. There's never been a time more prevalent than now where trustees need uh, that support to support organisations and groups across the county to manage the challenges that we've already heard of this morning and the new challenges facing cost of living. Some of the data that's been coming out around the third sector and the ability to move into the next year is really stark. So I think this is going to be an area of growth. Um, we've already seen the support that's been delivered by that team through COVID, through 21 and 22, and I think that will continue to develop. We also have the befriending service and the volunteer centre. Some of the figures around loneliness and isolation for our most vulnerable in our community um, has been really prevalent, prevalent. And the befriending service in 21 and 22 underwent some significant change, but continued to deliver excellent support and services to those that need it in our communities. Very reliant on volunteers and work very closely with the volunteer centre. Um, and all our delivery partners out there across Paris in terms of delivering volunteering. This is a, a real high standard and a real high class. Social value development and working with communities through the locality networks, through the Community Connector Service has been vital as well. And developing opportunities for groups to establish new support and new services through the Social, development, social Value Development Fund. The locality networks take place across the whole of the county, led by the community connectors with additional support from the development team. And that really gives opportunities for people in those grassroots groups 
to have their voices heard and to shape services for the future to ensure that we're meeting the needs of our community. Startwell Information Engagement Service also is important in terms of supporting children, young people, for they are our future and we need to ensure that they have their voices heard and the groups that support those children, young people can also continue to develop and thrive. As the restrictions opened up, we see more training opportunities, albeit a lot of training is still delivered online. Face to face opportunities have started to open up and there's a wealth of training available through PAVO. Uh, again, of a real high standard, and we're really pleased to be working with the Health and Care Academy as well in terms of delivering training opportunities. Other projects that we see there, Active Offer, looking at Welsh language and Amsary Knee, which is a time of um, an example of time banking. So as you can see, a wealth of um, service delivery through PAVO. When you have opportunity to read this online, you will see uh, Jamie's uh, forward, which he mentioned, reflecting on the year, and you will all see the, um, see the letter from myself as well. So as you know, uh, PAVO operates as a catalyst, a voice and a hub. So a catalyst for voluntary action. And I touched on the importance of volunteering, and it appears to be that in every conversation I have, particularly with statutory partners and organisational leaders, the value of volunteering um, and the wealth that we saw of volunteering through COVID continues. In a conversation earlier this week at the Winter Fair with the leader of the local authority, we spoke about volunteering and the importance of the volunteering role in supporting health and care. But of course, health and care is much wider than that. And we need to continue to offer and support that holistic approach. So through PAVO, we've supported over 700, in fact, nearly 800 organisations with direct advice and guidance. And again, that's really wide ranging support for organisations uh, with their governance structures around safe volunteering. And it could even be helping organisations to close with dignity. Uh, the team work really hard to support those organisations. We signed up over 330 volunteers uh, to placements and those volunteering opportunities continue to come in. And uh, Paris Befriending Service have supported over 400 clients to help combat loneliness and isolation. And that is in a range of formats, whether that's one to one. I'm really pleased that that face to face opportunity is reopened, whether it's supporting people to go to groups and local activities, telephone befriending or online activities or even uh, letter writing. It all depends what's best suited to that client. Supporting trustees has been uh, really important. And um, I've mentioned the importance of trustees going forward as well. So supporting trustees for groups across the whole of Powys and the training uh, participants has grown again over the year as the COVID restrictions eased. We've uh, supported the third sector and helped the third sector to secure funding and the development team work really hard with third sector groups uh, to support them to access funding opportunities and with their funding bids, bringing in over a million pound. Uh, referrals into the community connectors uh, continue to be busy with over 3000 referrals. So how well did we do it? Uh, we interact and uh, listen to our stakeholders and gather feedback. And over 94% of survey respondents reported an increase in skills to run their organisation effectively as a result of the PAVO support. And 96% of survey respondents reported PAVO support had resulted in continuous improvement of their volunteer experience. And I think we've certainly learned a lot during the COVID pandemic around onboarding of volunteers and the way we support volunteers. Um, and we will be looking to work further with our statutory agencies in terms of volunteering opportunities. Throughout the report, you will see a number of um, these feedback bubbles as well. So please do take time to read that because that gives you that really rich feel um, and that feedback from the organisations or individuals own voice about how they've interacted with PAVO and the difference it has made. So we also act as a voice for people, voluntary organisations and community groups and co-production is really vital. And there's been three, over 300 activities to help co-produce services across Paris. And again, as I mentioned earlier, that service user voice. So supporting the service users and citizen reps on the regional partnership board, the mental health planning and development partnership board 
um, and looking to support reps on the Older People's Forum as well. Uh, that really helps to bring uh, that true voice and citizen voice to those decision making and help to influence policy. We've attended over 68 partnerships on behalf of the third sector, um, and that's really wide ranging with both uh, the local authority, the health board and Welsh government. And I, I've got to say that has been um, you know, a tremendous amount of work, but really beneficial. I remember joining at Pavo and sometimes um, being that voice of the third sector, it felt that we were sometimes saying, oh, don't forget the third sector. But I think on the back of COVID, we've really seen that partnership space develop and that importance of the third sector shine through into those discussions. And within those meetings, of course, it's important that we help influence decision making and support organisations and individuals to influence decisions as well. So over 94 percent or 94 percent of survey respondents uh, reported an increase in skills. I've just done that one, haven't I? Keep going backwards, bear with me. There we go. So 100 percent of third sector organisations report PAVO had improved skills and organisations uh, to effectively influence decisions. 94% of organisations reported PAVO was effective in enabling the voice of the sector to influence those decisions. And 100% of public sector respondents reported PAVO was effective in enabling the voices of people to influence those decisions. So it's all about that influencing and that making a difference in that partnership space and being the voice of the sector. But of course, it's really important that we have those interactions on the ground with those third sector groups as well to make sure that we truly are acting as that voice. So being a hub of essential information and resources, uh, and we know that there's information everywhere out there and there's information overload sometimes. But Pavo has really shown that we can be a trusted source of information. And that very much worked on the back of our COVID uh, bulletins and the other range of bulletins that we produce and working very closely with our statutory uh, partners um, in a joined up approach to deliver information to communities and individuals. So we provide information in a range of ways through our website, through social media, uh, through joint working and through our networks. We've had nearly 2000 participants at the networks and forums, and many of these have remained online, but opportunities have also uh, uh, arisen for face to face networks, but also hybrid approaches to delivering those networks as well. Um, as you know, there's locality networks, but also themed networks such as dementia, advocacy, agricultural well-being and community buildings and many more. So if you're not already involved in some of those networks, please do get in touch. Uh, and if you would like to receive the bulletins as well, we can sh uh, sign you up to those. And joint uh, working for, uh, opportunities are really important as well as we uh, continue our work with statutory organisations and the sector. So the information um, is rated three or four uh, as always being useful and necessary. Um, so that really vital, as I said, uh, place to go for information. And 97% of organisations reported they were satisfi satisfied with the information shared by Pavo. Andrew's already touched on uh, the funding, uh, but the uh, the charts are there for you to have a look at in greater detail after when it's on the website. And again, with the grant schemes, um, and it's really important that we continue to liaise with funders and uh, reiterate the thanks as well for myself to funders. Um, and it provides great opportunities for the third sector to develop um, and open up new opportunities to support communities. So in the report as well, we have um, a case study there from the befriending service showing the difference that that has made and also from a, a local community centre about the support that Pavo has offered to them uh, through the community buildings network and directly uh, support to keep the community centre thriving. And the final page is just how to contact us. So please do have a look on our website. Please do get in touch. Um, as I said, link into our social media and to our bulletins and our networks. 
Um, it's a great opportunity to share information and see how we can move forward and develop together. But I'm really pleased to be able to um, share this report with you and to reflect on the fantastic year. And I'd just like to also thank, as I say, the trustees, but staff across the whole organisation, our partners in the health board and local authority, but most importantly, the uh, vast number of volunteers across the whole of Powys and the third sector groups and organisations that work tirelessly day in, day out to support our communities and to make Powys a wonderful place to live in. So thank you, Jamie. Thank you very much. Claire, um, I hope everybody gets the opportunity to have a look at that report in, in more detail and it will be available on our on our Pavo website. Um, I wanted to add my thanks um, to Claire um, and the whole Pavo team and my fellow trustees, um, our funders, partners, stakeholders. Um, I remain confident that Pavo and the third sector will continue to make such a huge difference to the lives of the people across the county. Um, and that leaves me just to say, uh, a big thank you for joining us this morning uh, and goodbye. Thanks all.